Hey everyone, Michael Short here. Come on, let's go outdoors. We're on Cove Lake and going after some lake trout. But more importantly, we're gonna tell a story about how this fishery is doing and the efforts the community is putting together in terms of protecting and improving the fishery. And we gotta get this big guy in the boat. <laughs> No doubt, Cold Lake is a unique aquatic ecosystem that attracts anglers from across Alberta and around the world. Some of my very first guests in 2002 were from Azerbaijan and, and, and Cape Town, South Africa. I've had people from China, from Russia, from oh, Africa, of course, uh, one from South America, uh, what a few from Australia. It is undeniable that this lake not only enhances the quality of life for local communities, but also contributes significantly to the regional economy. You know, lake trout is, is a really fun, you know, fish to go and catch. Uh, so, you know, we're really blessed to be able to have that in our lake. And, you know, there is, there is a market and in, in industry around it. We have charters, um, you know, that will take you out in the lake and, you know, go fishing for that. Uh, we have tons of, you know, the boat launch and our boat parking is full every every weekend um, so it's great to see these people come spend money in our community go fishing uh, you know and and build like um, that kind of community around our lake and fishing it's remarkable that cold lake has a sustainable population of lake trout given its history from the 1920s to the late 1940s lake trout was heavily targeted by a thriving commercial fishery which ultimately led to the collapse of their population. In the 1960s through the 80s, some two million lake trout were stocked into Cold Lake, but even that effort did little to boost population numbers. A new fisheries management approach was needed. Yeah, so starting in the 1980s is when we really um, started implementing a series of increasingly restrictive um, harvest limits. Um, both recreationally and commercially in Alberta and Saskatchewan, um, just to do, like you said, to protect um, spawning fish. Due to this positive development, there is now a move to implement new regulations. In September of 2022, a working group comprised of community stakeholders and fisheries biologists from environment and protected areas collaborated to develop new sport fishing regulation options for lake trout in Cold Lake. Well, it was a worthwhile exercise for, for certain. Um, you know, I was a, a long-term uh, city councillor and, uh, and been on the Chamber of Commerce for over 20 years now as a board on the board. And, uh, and, and the idea of fishing and the limits uh, coming off the lake for lake trout has always been an ongoing issue for us. I mean, it's the, the lake and, and the tourism it generates is so critical you know, to the economic well-being of our community. It, it was past due for something to be re reviewed and done about it. Uh, we've heard a lot of different uh, approaches over the years. I think the uh, kind of the increasing size limits that they've been placing for the last decade or so, ever increasing, has helped the stock to uh, fully recover. And it's now time to open up and allow uh, those that come out here for sport fishing to enjoy it. Yeah, definitely. Um, the, the whole team was there. They had a couple more members from, from Edmonton came out each time. Uh, they, they were open to all of our discussion. Um, we had a, a great team of, of people from the local area, people that were very interested in the fish, in the long-term fish. People that have fished here for 20, 30, 40 years were in that room. Um, so yeah, a lot of ideas, um, not all the same, didn't expect that. But at the same time, everybody had the same goal, is to long-term sustainability of these fish. So uh, at the end of the day, how, did, how was a consensus reached? So the working group uh, mandate was to sort of uh, come up with some ideas. So we asked the working group members to um, think about what they wanted from the fishery and how they thought that we could get there, um, what kinds of regulations they wanted to see. And so we asked them to bring those things back and we tested out those regulations um, using a, a population model that we walked them through. We talked about sort of all of the population characteristics that go into the model, how a population model works, um, and then how we would interpret the results. 
Um, and so we modeled all kinds of suggestions from the groups, lot sizes, minimum, maximum sizes, um, tags, um, increased bag limits. And the group um, was allowed to sort of examine the outputs of the model. Um, we had some conversation about the different outputs um, and the benefits and, and cons to each of them. And then the group um, was asked at our last meeting to vote on sort of their top three choices. So we did a few rounds of voting and uh, the group came up with their final three. Um, and then those three suggestions were put forward uh, to the broader Alberta public in our winter public engagement session. And where are we headed, I guess, is the keep you, everyone's in suspense wanting to know where are we going? <laughs> yeah, so the uh, results of the final um, Alberta public engagement uh, was sort of strongly in favor of one particular slot size option, the 65 to 70 centimeter slot option. Um, and so now that uh, that proposal has gone to the Saskatchewan government. Um, they need to do their consultation on it as well because Cold Lake is an interprovincial water body, so we have uh, folks from both sides of the province that are involved, or sorry, from folks from both provinces who are involved in management. Um, so the Saskatchewan government is currently doing their public engagement and then once that's finished we'll get uh, back together and go over the results and hopefully we'll have a new regulation in place for 2024. It has been proven that the current regulation of catching only one fish over 75 centimeters has benefited the trout population resulting in a significant increase in their numbers. While the new fishing regulations no doubt will be welcomed, as anglers, we need to be proficient with proper fishing techniques if we're going to maintain healthy populations of lake trout into the future. Yeah, you, you don't want to play them too long and tire them out completely. So they try to stay down deep, and that's the fight you get out of them is staying below the thermocline at about 28 feet. If you're fishing in deeper waters, make sure to give the lake trout enough time to release the pressure from their swim bladder by burping as they rise to the surface. The next step is to ensure that the fish stays in the water. Have your pliers ready to remove the hook. Snap that quick photo if desired and return the fish as quickly as possible. It has been a long journey but thanks to the dedication of the working group with support from provincial biologists, the future is looking bright for the lake trout population.